Um, so the new book, uh, Surf Guru, is a collection of short stories, and I'm going to read from the title story. Uh, it's, I'm not going to get through it all. It's a story that is told in a bunch of short little sections, each with titles. Um, I'll try to pause meaningfully so you can tell which are the titles. Uh, and uh, I'll get through as much as I can. So, the surf guru. Elements. The surf guru spends most of his time sitting expectantly on the redwood deck of his dull green two-story house atop the cliff at Padre Point, a favorite spot for surfers in the know. He watches the surfers and looks out at the ocean. He often sips Chianti as he watches and looks. Sometimes he nods off in the afternoon and only awakens late at night when the ocean breeze tickles his nose with smoke from the bonfires below. His business. He owns a company that makes top-notch equipment for the well-prepared surfer as well as the casual beachgoer. The name of the company is Guru, that's G-O-O dash R-O-O, all caps. And it appears on surfboards, wetsuits, quick-release leashes, wax, baggy trunks, SPF 50 plus waterproof sunblock, fashion eyewear, sports sandals, sheepskin, comfy boots, sarongs, rain gear, board racks, beach towels, fanny packs, easy rinse, home hair bleaching systems, shock and pressure resistant ISO 6425 chronographs, antibacterial towelettes, feature films, and dog food. For years, Guru has been at the forefront of beach technology. The surf guru innovates quietly, as if he were dreaming. And then two MBAs, Chad and Olivia, bring his visions to the marketplace. Everyone who surfs at Padre Point wears Guru and rides Guru. Everyone except the red-haired boy. Power. Some say the surf guru controls the tides. The red-haired boy. At this very moment, sunset is approaching and the red-haired boy is surfing a three-foot swell. He rides a low-rider board, that's L-O-W-E, and wears a Pacific skin wetsuit. Both of these items cost significantly less than their guru equivalents. The boy thinks his lowrider board is more responsive than any guru board he's ever tried, and unlike his old guru wetsuit, the Pacific skin model doesn't chafe him in the neck and crotch. In the surf guru's eyes, the red-haired boy is not unlike someone who invites himself to dinner and then insults the cook. The surf guru's wife, cinematically. He met his wife on the beach. He was surfing, trying out a board fitted with prototypes of the soon-to-be-famous Guru Hydro Rib fins. She was a sunburned art history and modern thought double major, looking for her car keys in the sand. He came out of the water and found her keys instantly, as if he could see things she couldn't. Six months later, they were married. After ten years, she'd had enough. You are so remote, she said. I am not remote. Then you are stoic. I am not stoic. You are no fun. The dog thinks I'm great fun. You are turgid, she said. That is an interesting word, he said. The word turgid is itself quite turgid. It is very successful at being what it is. Unlike this marriage, which is not successful at being anything, she responded cinematically. She packed up all of her things except for her guru branded apparel, which she cut into shreds with pinking shears and piled on the bed. She then took all the dog food in the house and dumped it on the front steps. These were symbolic actions, she said, and she hoped they would haunt him. Stray dogs congregated in front of the house for weeks. <laughs> Drainage, part one. He watches the surfers every day, admiring their fluid recklessness, their joy and struggle, their twin senses of community and territoriality. He pretends not to notice when they glance up at him with furtive reverence. Some of them are kids trying to catch a few good waves before or after school. 
Some are in their twenties, hoping for a breath of freedom before they head off to their jobs drafting contracts or designing urban drainage systems or selling fitness accessories. Some, gray-haired and leather-skinned, are older than the surf guru himself. Sometimes he feels as if he's watching over a nursery school where children play duck, duck, goose and learn other essential social skills. Then those children grow up and return with their own children, passing on the legacy of the waves. Hats. He wears many hats, not altogether metaphorically. His favorites are the fez, the miter, and the mortarboard, but he has many others from all corners of the globe. When he feels giddy, often but not always from too much Chianti, he opts for a hat with a plume, the puckish Tyrolean, perhaps, or the stately Shako. When the apes in his fused vertebrae tell him a storm is coming, he dons the beretta, the hat of wariness and watchfulness. Drainage, part two. Chad and Olivia bring him a financial report every Wednesday. Each week, he pretends to read the report carefully. When Chad and Olivia leave, he tells the dog, it is essential that they believe I care deeply. This is how the world works. Meet the tide. The red-haired boy, frustrated by the calm surf, slaps the water with an open palm, demanding one good set before he calls it a day. Moments later, as the sun nicks the horizon, a head-high wave rises from nowhere. He positions himself, catches it, drives down the line into a heavy roundhouse cutback, then glides through a string of graceful turns in the pocket. The surf guru applauds quietly with his fingertips. Closed out. The trophy case in the dull green house is empty. In an effort to raise capital, all 473 of the Surf Guru's trophies were sold to a surf-themed pizza chain owned by an aging former star of Hollywood beach movies. They are now mounted in the, on the walls of Shred Boy Pizza franchises in 26 cities worldwide, including brand new airport locations in Athens, Saskatoon, and Las Vegas. <laughs> a Fine Vintage, Part 1. The red-haired boy picks off a nice right and executes a quick barrel and a vertical snap. He swoops long, smooth lines across the wall of water. The surf guru pours another glass of Chianti. Even though his back is knotted up and burning with pain, he puts on a beret, the hat of restrained contentment. Three. I'm oh, sorry, not three. Tombstone. Olivia calls Chad in a panic. Next year's line of guru boards, the Poseidon series, must be renamed. Lowrider, it seems, has just filed on all commercial uses of Poseidon. They found out, she says, we must have a leak. Don't be silly, Chad says. I'm not being silly, I'm talking about corporate espionage. Sometimes coincidences are just coincidences, Chad informs her. You can't just go around believing everything that appears to be true. Olivia's heart pounds as she tries to think of a suitable alternative. Neptune, Triton, Apollo, Vishnu, Tongaroa, Quetzalcoatl, Ra? It's no use. All the gods have been trademarked. <laughs> the surf guru, upon rising this morning, Surfers fill the bay, a hundred guru boards twinkling, a hundred black wetsuits with gurus stamped in screaming green across the chest. It is an ordinary sight, but today he's taken aback. So many pieces of himself spread across the water, carried by the waves like so much flotsam. He eats a big breakfast. He worries that he's been losing weight. I think I'll stop there. Thank you.